Welcome to the next chapter. I'm Fred Hughes, Amazon best-selling science fiction writer. And as you probably have guessed, this, this show is all about reading, being an author, how to become a published author, all things writing. So this week's guest, which who will be on here in a little bit, is Chris Kennedy, president and CEO of Chris Kennedy Publishing, and today, uh, even though he's a prolific writer in his own right, we're going to talk about publishing books and talk about what a publisher does and uh, how to get published with a publisher. But in the meantime, let's, I want to talk about a little bit of news that's, that popped up this week. Um, one of the things we've talked about over the past few weeks, uh, discussing how all of you can become an author and how one of the important things to do as an author is to grow your brand grow your and your brand is your name um, and something came up this week that uh, I wanted to discuss don't know if anybody's ever heard of it um, Penn America that's P-E-N America is a, a literary group out of New York City and they um, have an annual award ceremony where they um, present awards to authors in various categories for uh, literary achievement. Um, and this week they've made it into the news for the wrong reasons. Um, several of the authors, I want to say up to 20 of the authors who were scheduled to receive awards, including the author who was scheduled to receive the top award have uh, informed Pan America this week that they were no longer going to be attending the ceremony and they were withdrawing their books, their winning books, from being considered for the award. And this all stems from Pan, Ameri Pan America's um, support for Israel against uh, Hamas in, in, in their war. Um, and I'm not saying that they were right or they were wrong. Uh, America is a free speech society. But one of the things as an author you have to understand um, is that anything you say on social media, what, you know, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, whatever, um, unless, you can, you know, unless you want to create a burner account where you can freely say whatever you want, um, everything you say can come back to affect your brand. Because, I mean, you can, I hate to make it sound so simplistic, but you can say the, earth, the sky is blue and people who believe that the sky is green will suddenly have an issue. And not only will they not buy your product, they may go on the same social networking sites and actively try to convince people not to buy your stuff. So you need to be very careful about political, religious, you know, whatever you want to talk about online, you need to be very careful about what you say, how you say it, because those groups can come back and literally burn you to the ground. I mean, and it doesn't even have to be true. We all know how, how reliable Facebook's information is. So, um, and once a campaign like that starts, it's really hard to stop it. So, I'm not telling you not to voice your opinions on things. Pen America did, and now they're paying the price. Uh, not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong. But there can be repercussions for voicing your views on various subjects. Enough said for that. Now. As promised, I'd like to welcome today's guest, Chris Kennedy, writer, entrepreneur, editor, 
publisher, my publisher, uh, sometimes referred to as the factory boss and, a, like myself, a veteran, although he was an officer and, you know, flew jets. And I was about as far away from you as I could be. As far away from you as you could be. But uh, so here, here he is, Chris Kennedy, and so much to talk to Chris about. Today's show, we're going to concentrate on Chris Kennedy, the publisher, not Chris Kennedy, the author. Um, I'm going to bring Chris back for another show because he's written so much and basically, how many books you've written so right now, Chris? 65. 65 books and then Lord knows how many stories and everything else in there. So you uh, probably... About 40 more short stories and, and things like that. I was going to say you're well over 100 published items. So, and... Yeah. So obviously he has a lot to talk about as an author um, and not just what he's written, but how he writes, because that's amazing also. But I wanted, we've been on a kick on the show talking about people uh, uh, wondering how to get their stuff published. And we've talked about self, you know, indie publishing. And since you're a publisher, I wanted to talk to you about small what basically i guess we call it small press publishing is that's what that's what chris kennedy publishing is and so let's start with how do, what made you what led you to the path of, of creating your own publishing house um well first of all thanks for having me here today um the um how did I get there? Well, the, the easy way is to say uh, 75 agents said no. And, uh, you know, I, I had written a story and, and I thought it was good. Um, tried to find an agent. All the agents said no. Um, well, about half of them said no. I'm still waiting to hear um, from the <laughs> other uh, half. Un unfortunately, you know, after about 10 years, I'm, I'm probably not going to hear anything no. from them. Um, or they're so, embarrassed, you know, or they're embarrassed, gone. or they're embarrassed to reach back out to you now. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, anyway, so you know, I had heard about this thing called self-publishing uh, at the time. It's now evolved into indie publishing, um, and and I, you know, I didn't know anything about that. Um, but but I was, you know, like you said, in the military, and I had learned to plan. Uh, planning was something I could do. I was so I I developed a plan. Okay, what do I need? You know, read the read the different source material on you know what needed to be done. Uh, developed a plan to to get the editing done, get cover design, formatting, things like that, um, and you know started out and and just went with it. Um, published my first book, that that went really well. So you know I said, wow, need to do that again. So I did, um, and and kept kept on going. Uh, about the time that I had five or six. Um, some people started noticing that that I was doing, you know, pretty good. And they said, hey, um, you really seem to know what you're doing. So would you uh, publish me too? Um, and and I, I, a couple of them were friends. So I was like, okay, well, you know, yeah, sure, I can do that. Um, and, and then it just became more and more. And before I knew it, um, all of a sudden, I woke up one morning and, and I was publishing, you know, 15 different people. And it's like, oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm a publisher. How did that happen? <laughs> so that's, you know, it's funny because I remember, oh, look, good Lord, it had to have been 2017. I went to Dragon Con and you were there. And I had already, I had been reading your stuff, but I had, didn't realize that literally right out of the chute, you had decided well, I'm going to be a writer, but I'm also going to be a publisher. And um, sort of it just devolved from there. That's amazing. Who who were some of the early people that you uh, published? And here's Chris's website. But uh, Well, it, I started out in, in a, a publishing group to, to kind of learn to grow my business. Um, and, and there were a number of people that were in it that, that wanted to have things published, but, but didn't really know how. So I did, I did several of them. And then uh, Mark Wandry came up and said, Hey, 
um, you know, would, would you do me? And, and I said, you know, sure, uh, be happy to. Um, and then, you know, a couple other people and the, the four horsemen universe started. And, and then all of a sudden I was, I was publishing tons of different people. Well, uh, and that sort of segues into the next part of the conversation. And that's the four horsemen universe, which has been like the bread and butter, uh, for Chris Kennedy publishing from early on. And, um, so after we come back from the break, we'll talk about the origins of the Four Horsemen universe, or as some of us say, the 4HU. Um, I'm Fred Hughes. This is the next chapter. See you in a bit. Fred Hughes, and this is the next chapter, and we're talking to Chris Kennedy, author and publisher of Chris Kennedy Publishing. And when we went into the break, we were starting to talk about the Four Horsemen universe. So Mark Wandry is sort of like, I don't want to say, fa is father the right word of the Four Horsemen universe? <laughs> He, he was the uh, original creator, absolutely. You can say father. Sure, okay. So, and then obviously there were some other people early on that got involved and started writing uh, stories in the universe. And from there, it's, it just sort of took off. Well, this was, this was a, a publisher success. Um, you know, we, uh, we sat down, we, we talked about what we wanted to do and, um, the, the story itself is kind of long, but I'll, I'll compress it for here. Um, we decided we were going to press forward with it and, um, he was going to write, uh, the first and third book. I was going to write the second and fourth. Um, we, we put all those out and then, um, so we've got this whole universe and, and we wanted to expand it a little. Um, so we decided to do an anthology. Um, and, and I asked all of my all of my author friends, you know, hey, how, how'd you like to write a, a short story in this universe? Um, we were hoping for 14 stories. Uh, we ended up getting 42. Uh, so the book that was supposed to be a fistful of credits became a fistful of credits for a few credits more and the good, the bad and the murk. Um, we then started taking some of the short stories from those and said, you know, hey, you know, um, we really like this uh, peacemaker in this story. Could you write a full book about that? And, and we selectively targeted, you know, the, the best stories. And uh, so that helped us get some more stories out faster. Um, and, and we continued to grow that uh, meanwhile, writing more ourselves so that, you know, we continued the main storyline and, and we now have all of these other uh, stories coming in from, you know, other, other directions. Um, and before too long, we were able to uh, publish one about every uh, five weeks uh, and then one about every four weeks. And then uh, for about two years, we published a book, uh, a new book every uh, every three weeks. And being able to sustain a series like that, being an author myself, I understand it. You know, nothing is <laughs> nothing sells your current books better than the next book you write. <laughs> So absolutely. And when, you know, we have 93 out in the series at this time, um, that's a lot of different chances for somebody to find it. Oh yeah. I mean, and then if they like it and then, you know, you get the double dip, you know, if they like it, then they go all the way back to the beginning and read Cart Cartwright's Cavaliers or absolutely. Or, um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Chris. Ahead. No, I, I was going to say absolutely. And, you know, we've we've had a lot of people do just that, um, where they they came and they were like, "Well, hey, this looks like it's a book in the middle of the series." I went back to the start of the series, but but there's still more before that. Ah, yes, yes, there is. Let me tell you about Cartwright's Cavaliers, uh, the book that started it all, and and we send them back to there, and um, you know they get going on that. And, and there've been a lot of people that have been real excited and have run all the way through all the books in the series. And, and it's not just that it's the, uh, and it's another thing that 
as a publisher, you have people that all of a sudden write a short story and they become famous and, uh, or I shouldn't say, well, they become well known as an author because either they had the opportunity to write in the 4HU or wrote a short story um, and then they move on to other things. And one of the people I can think about and specifically is uh, uh, Kevin Eikenberry. Um, and then there's some others, uh, Casey Azell. I mean, but um, that absolutely, we um, the the different uh, anthologies. Um, we always made sure that we kept four or five spots for um, new authors. Um, that you know, so we had those up for submission, um, which gave us the ability to find some some new voices and and bring them along. Um, the the Four Horsemen universe has been the uh, the first published story for uh, about twenty five authors now. So that's that's let us bring forward uh, a bunch of new authors um, and let them you know get get some uh, critical acclaim. You know, as as big as the Four Horsemen universe is, that's getting their work out in front of a lot of other people, um, and and then you know that lets them uh, bring their next book out, and and they've already got you know people that know them. So that's that's been pretty powerful for a lot of the different authors. So. So you have the 4HU, and for lack of a better word, all the different spinoffs. I mean, the 4HU as a whole, and then you have all the different storylines in the 4HU. But those are not, that's not all that Chris Kennedy does. I mean, you've got some other uh, I got, I mill sci-fi. I have a sci-fi. Of great uh, series that, that, that we're publishing, uh, starting with yours. Uh, the the Prince of Britannia saga, um, you know people people love that. Uh, the the eighth book in the series is currently you know selling like gangbusters. Um, we've got the Last Marines that's that's doing super well. Uh, we have uh, a number of others, Abner Fortis, uh, ISMC. We've got uh, the Lunar Free State. Uh, Casey Azell and I have uh, the Ashes of Enesia. Um, new series coming from uh, Bill Fawcett and Casey Moore's uh, Blood and Armor. You know, we've we've got all sorts of different things for uh, sci-fi, and uh, we also have an imprint that that does fantasy, uh, run by Rob Howell, that uh, just put out uh, an anthology last weekend, Paladins of Valor. So, you know, we we go pretty much run the gamut of of sci-fi and fantasy. So. How does one, I mean, you talked about, been a while since I've heard of Chris Kennedy doing an anthology. Um, when's the next one going to come out? Or when are you thinking about the, the next the one? Nec um, well, we, we typically do about two anthologies in the Four Horsemen universe a year. Um, so we've got one coming out uh, probably next month. Um, so we'll be recruiting again in about six months, about, well, actually probably about three or four months by the time we get it out and, and get, you know, the stories in. Um, we also do, we've done an several anthologies in the Salvage Title universe, um, which is another uh, shared universe that's up to about uh, 25 books. Uh, we've done anthologies in the Fallen World, um, you know, which is post-apocalyptic. Uh, so we've we've done uh, anthologies all around for for a number of our shared universes and in some of our uh, other series. So, because one of the things that I've talked to, um, reaching out to people watching the show, part of the show is to try to enlighten people. Okay, you think you know you have a story. You think you have the ability to write how do you get into the business and one of the things i mentioned to them was writing short stories and submitting them for, for anthologies so uh, when we come back from the break we'll talk more about how you know how could they do that with chris kennedy publishing or if they have how do, a you, find, how do you find the opportunities how do you find the opportunities exactly because that's half the battle and um so after we come back to the break, we'll talk more about how, how can I get Chris Kennedy to publish something for me. Um, I'm Fred Hughes, and this is the next chapter. All 
right, I'm Fred Hughes. We're back from the break. This is the next chapter, and we're talking to Chris Kennedy, uh, president, CEO, head bottle washer at Chris Kennedy Publishing. And um, I do it all. I know you do it all. There's some people that complain about that, though, but we won't talk about that today. Um, anyway, before we get into how do uh, people, how can people convince you to publish their stuff, um, I want to talk about what, what the relationship between a publisher and an author is. You know, what does a publisher expect out of an author, and what should a quality pub, a, qu what kind of services should a quality like yourself, publisher, provide to the author? Because we know there are a bunch of publishers that take advantage of their authors. I'll just I'll be nice and say it that way. Yep, so there certainly are. Um, okay, so. You know, the, the nature of the relationship between a publisher and um, an author is, is going to vary a little bit um, depending on, you know, what, you know, whether you're with a major trad pub or, or whether you're going with uh, a smaller indie publisher. Um, but, but typically, uh, a legitimate publisher is going to do just about everything uh, except write the book. The author is going to write the book um, and give it to the publisher and then uh, the publisher is going to, you know, provide an editing, uh, is going to get the, the cover design done, um, is going to do all of the formatting, and, and then is going to distribute it to all of the various, you know, retailers, whether they're online or, or Barnes & Noble, things like that. Um, money uh, should only flow from the publisher to the author. Um, so if you're, if the, your publisher is asking you to pay for things, whether that's, uh, an editing pass or, or the cover or something like that, um, you, you could pretty much, uh, know that, you know, they're, they're not that legitimate. Um, they're only in there for your money, um, which, uh, publishers are actually, you know, trying to put out the best books possible to get readers money. Um, because the stories are so good, the covers are so good, and, and all of that. So, uh, and I can't emphasize what Chris said enough. There's, there, and some, some people call them vanity presses, whatever, but you can go on, uh, they're all over Facebook. I mean, shoot, I probably get three or four ads a day pop up on my feed, uh, because I'm listed as an author of different publishers for $9.99, they'll publish my book completely. Um, for the low, low price. For, for, yeah. And but, yeah. But as soon as they got you, then, then it's always, you know, oh, well, we want to, we really want to do this distribution, but it's going to cost a little bit more. You know, oh, we're, oh, and we can get it into KU for you for just a little bit more. Um, you know, even though it doesn't cost any more, they, they always try and upsell you with this and upsell you with that. And, and before you know it, you're in for, you know, five or $10,000 and your book goes out and, and they haven't done any marketing and it sells like two copies and you make, oh, I don't know, uh, two or three bucks. Oh yeah. I mean, and, and I, I have some, uh, acquaintance of, uh, Chris's in mind, uh, John Sears had, was taken advantage of like that. Um, and not only that, the the the, uh, the that publisher basically sort of shut his website down, but still had all the books up for sale and was taking all of uh, John's money, and he didn't see a dime of it. So, yeah, so there's a took, lot of took the money and. So I mean, the point of the point we're making is if uh, you've got a story to tell and it's you know you need to do research. The internet, you know, hey. Internet's out there. Google search it. Uh, do the research on the people uh, who are reaching out to you. And like Chris said, never. There should never be a reason for you to pay to get your book published. If you have to, and we've already talked about that, indie publish it. And then all you have to worry about is you know finding and paying for your own editor. 
finding and getting your own cover and then putting some money into marketing. But that doesn't cost you 10 grand. You can do all of that for under yeah. two. So, uh, yeah, you could, you could do it all for under, under a thousand, uh, depending. I mean, you, <laughs> somebody, somebody once asked the question, you know, what does it cost to self publish? Whatever you want it to. That's right. You could, you could get away with doing, you could get away with, spending zero dollars you know to, to publish a book but you know people are gonna you know see it as you get what you pay for um you won't have the cover that's going to get anybody to pick it up you know although you know they'll take a look at the uh story you know on the preview and see that it's full of errors and they're not going to want to buy it so so it really does behoove you to spend a little bit of money at least uh, to get an editor and and to get somebody that really knows what they're doing for cover design. Um, sure, you can do some of that yourself if uh, you know you're a, a really good artist. Um, but if you're not, which I'm not, um, you know you need to pay somebody and and you need to pay enough to to get quality work um, so that you know readers will actually take a look at the book. And that and I think that goes to that leads us into the other part of what a publisher can provide an author and that's uh and we didn't really talk about it before and that's reach um you know how many how, how many how many subscribers do you have to chris kennedy uh newsletter uh over eight thousand so there's eight thousand people if if you if chris kennedy is publishing your book um and it comes out, his news, he has a newsletter that comes out every Monday. And like this week, this week's book, which is actually his, so it's sort of, you know, it's his and Casey Azell's newest book. But that, that news got blasted out to 8,000 people, which is, I guarantee you, um, if you're like me, I don't have 8,000 followers on Facebook. Um, wish I did, it would make life so much easier to sell my books, but 8,000 people and okay, fine. Not everybody opens Chris Kennedy's newsletters. What, what's your, uh, click, click rate for your newsletter? Um, I, I don't know. I'd have to see oh, from I'm, the website designer what it is right now. But I mean, typically most I have people, somebody that manages it. For me. Yeah, it, it's pretty good. I mean, all, all of the people that we have are people that want to be on the newsletter. Um, you know, so the, it's typically the, the open rate is higher than average because, you know, I don't, I don't buy newsletter, you know, lists. I don't buy mailing lists. I don't buy emails. You know, everything that, that I have is, is organically built. So it's readers. Uh, there's probably, you know, some authors in there too, but uh, even some of those are, are readers as well. But Chris is, I, I, even if he has, you know, even if it's as low as 50%, which would be actually a, a really great number, that means 4,000 people read a newsletter this week that your book is going to be listed in. Um, so that is a huge help. And, and it's, it's pretty neat because uh, it comes out once in the pre-order and then it'll be uh, next week again in the regular releases. So it'll it'll get out at least a couple times in front of everybody. So even if they're only opening it half the time, you'll still get seen by them. Right, exactly. And and not just that, it's the, the shout outs that, shout outs from other people that follow Chris Kennedy, uh, being, you know, having your stuff posted on Chris Kennedy's website, or I mean on his Facebook page and his website also. There's a ton of people that are always going to the website to see what's new. Um, so it's, that's what a publisher, when you're searching for a publisher, that's what you need to look for. You know, but. Right. Other, and, and I think one of, the, one of the benefits that CKP has too is um, all of the authors are, are very much a family. Um, so when a book comes out, all the, you know, each of the authors are happy to promo, uh, you know, whatever the story is that week. Um, because they know that when it's when their story releases, you know everybody else is gonna you know give them a shout out as well. So you know it's it's the power of belonging to a group um, where the you know it, one of those synergy things where we're we're more powerful together than the the sum of our parts. 
And um, it's, it's amazing because I can tell you, I, you know, I've done some indie work since joining Chris and my indie stuff, although it sells pretty well, does not sell near as well as my stuff through Chris Kennedy. And there's me on, up there on the screen. Ooh, I need to change that pick. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, also, uh, I have a, a marketing budget. I, I spend money on Facebook ads. I spend money on Amazon ads, uh, do book bubs periodically do, you know, a number of other, uh, email marketing services. So, um, you know, you're, you're also getting that kind of thing as well. Um, you know, last, last month I spent, uh, $10,000 on marketing. Um, That's which, you know, as a, as a single author, you're probably not going to start out doing that. So after the break, we're going to talk some more about how to get published with Chris Kennedy. We're back after the break. We're talking to Chris Kennedy of Chris Kennedy Publishing. And we're talk we were talking about various services a, a good publisher um, can provide. Um, and what he provides. And we, he was talking about his advertising, and uh, that's a whole different conversation in itself that you know could last several shows. So don't even want to go there. But, uh, but I guess I want to touch for a minute on what the difference is between a small press like Chris Kennedy Publishing um, and what the difference between you and the services you can provide and a trade pub, whether that's Bain or Tor or whoever. Uh, everybody sees Bain books, they walk in, well, they might see them uh, walk into Barnes and Noble or something, and you'll see, you might see some of these other uh, major trade pubs books on the shelves. Um, What's the difference between you as far as uh, you and them and services provided, uh, et cetera? Yeah. Well, um, at a con one time, I was talking with uh, Tony Weiskopf, uh, the, the head of Bain, and she said something that, that has kind of resonated with me. She said, you're, you're not really a small press. You're more a resource-challenged major press. Um, cause I, I put out about 70 books a year, but I don't have quite the resources that a trad pub has. Um, so what is, what does that mean? Means probably you're going to get one editorial pass, uh, as opposed to two or three that you might at a, at a trad pub. Um, it means that while I'm going to get your book out to, uh, the, the different e-retailers like Amazon and, uh, the electronic version of Barnes and Noble, um, I'm probably not going to be able to get your books into uh, Barnes and Noble or, or one of the bricks and mortar stores. Um, so if that's something that you absolutely have, have to have, you know, you, you really want to see your book on a shelf, um, then, then I'm probably not the, the way to do it. Um, you know, you're probably going to want to go trad pub if, if that's something you absolutely have to have. Now, that said, um, it's just about impossible to get into one unless you know somebody. Um, you're going to need an agent. Um, your agent's going to have to uh, like your book. You know, you're, you're going to have to sell the agent first to take you on. Then you're going to have to try and sell um, the, the trad pub to publish it. And you're, you're looking at, you know, years and years, um, you know, to get your book to, to be published. Um, and then once you're in the process, it's probably going to take you a couple of years before it actually uh, hits, the, hits the stores. Um, whereas, you know, if I take you on to publish, um, you're probably going to have your book published within six months. Um, I'm currently running about uh, four or five months out. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting them in and out fairly quickly, whereas a trad pub will, will take years. And I, and I and that segues this right into, I have a story. Well, I had a story. I convinced you to publish it. <laughs> um, so someone has a story. 
What would be the process of reaching out to Chris Kennedy or any publisher, but we'll say specifically Chris Kennedy Publishing, um, to convince them okay. to publish? Well, I can I can talk about I can talk about you know me. Uh, how do you how do you get me? Well, uh, there's a couple different ways. You know, first of all, um, you know you can uh, join the the mailing list or or one of our Facebook groups uh, like the the Factory Floor. Um, and you can submit when there are anthologies, because like I said, all of our anthologies have open slots. Uh, you win a slot, you know, then then you're going to be published by me. And uh, once you're published by me, I, I tend to like to publish more. You know, you're, you're part of the family and, and we go from there. Um, you can also see me at, at one of the conventions I do. Um, you know, I do three or four every year, um, sometimes more. Um, come talk to me, talk to me about your story, you know, what your, what your plan is. Um, you know, if I talk with you at, at a convention, I'm at least going to take a look at your book, um, and, and see, you know, uh, if, if you're ready for prime time and if so, you know, then, then we can talk about publishing. Um, if you can't get to one of the ones where I am, talk to one of my authors and, and say, Hey, would you, would you put in a good word with Chris? Um, because I trust all of my authors, you know, uh, to, to take care of, uh, take care of the CKP brand. Um, so if you impress one of them, they'll, they'll tell me and, and, and I'll take a look. Okay. So, um, but what about, you know, I've heard a lot of publishers want, oh, I want three store. I want, I want a trilogy. I'll, I'll use the Kevin Steverson. Okay, great story. Now you owe me a trilogy. <laughs> um, so, so is that sort of like, yeah, you know, well, right, right, right now. Yeah. Right now. Um, if I take you on to publish, I'm, I'm probably going to want, uh, three books before I publish the first one. And, and that's because we, well, there's actually two reasons why. Uh, first, we, we live in a, a binge mentality, a binge society where people want to, you know, they, they don't want one and then done and, and wait for a long time. They want to they want to binge the whole series. So what what I like to do is is publish, uh, you know, the, the books in a trilogy about five weeks apart uh, that keeps the readers engaged and, and we've found sells more books. Um, they also, you know, readers these days don't want to get stuck like with George R. R. Martin, where you start a series and then, you know, there are no more books. Uh, you're still in the middle and you're stuck, you know. Um, so by, by making sure I have the, the trilogy before I start publishing, I can promise the readers that that's not going to happen. Um, so they know that they can, they can trust me as a publisher that if they start something, they're, they're going to get satisfaction. Excellent. So, so now you need, now all you folks know that go to Chris Kennedy Publishing, sign up for his newsletter, uh, try to sign up for one of his uh, Facebook support sites, Facebook groups, and look and see when the next call for an anthology is. And uh, the same thing goes, the other anthologies like for uh, salvage universe would be up there too, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, and one thing I can say is that uh, we do have a fantasy, um, a fantasy uh, submission opening coming up here at the start of June. Uh, we'll be open for submissions uh, from June 1st through June 10th. The website will have the information. The newsletter will have all the information. You don't have to have your story completely finished to submit. Um, you just need to have, you know, at least three chapters and um, have a plan for the rest of it. I want to thank Chris for uh, joining us today. Factory Boss came through for me. So that's it for this week. I'm Fred Hughes. This is the next chapter. Mm -hmm.